All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about the winners and the losers of my Florida trip. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the reels I've used. This is just a straight review video. Um, this Florida trip took place January 30th through, I think it was February 1st. So I'm out here today, I'm actually replacing a loser of the trip. It's gonna be about reels, a little bit about jigs, and some lures. Um, I ended up fishing probably somewhere between 20 to 25 days out of those 30 days in Florida. And I'll say what held up, uh, what was good, what I noticed, a um, couple things, I did not rinse my gear. So any gear that really hit salt water in general did not get rinsed. You know, I was on the road, everything got beat up real hard. I overpacked like crazy for this trip. Now I know in the future, I ended up coming down with six rod and reel setups. Next time I'm coming down with just three. Okay, so this right here is the Daiwa Fuego 3000. This is probably the lightest spinning reel I've ever owned. This saw about 15 to 20 days on the water. <laughs> It, it saw tons of big jacks, uh, which are the equivalent of, I'd say, like false albacore or bluefish for my, my friends in the Northeast. Um, they fight really hard. They put, you know, they really stress out your gear. And it saw tarpon, which are, you know, like striped bass, bluefish hybrid on crack. Um, so it, it really went through the ringer. I had one issue with this reel. Um, so my best advice is this reel does not take to heavy submerging and salt spray. I had it seized up. Uh, after a real heavy day when I was taking a lot of water into the kayak, it was getting a lot of spray, I had to break it down and dry it out and re-grease it. Um, but in terms of performance for a $100 reel, this is probably the best spinning reel I've owned. I've owned the Shimano Stratix, um, the Daiwa BG I've owned, Penn Battles. So I've, I've owned different reels. You know, the performance this reel has given me is, it's unbeatable for 100 bucks. However, at the end of the day, um, heavy salt spray, probably getting submerged repeatedly. These are things you have to keep in mind and really, um, you know, take, break down the reel if, you've, if you've hit these issues, you know, dry it out, re-grease the main shaft. Uh, and the other reel is, um, you've seen this for a while now. Uh, this is the Tsunami Shield. It's a 3000. Um, I also own a 4000, which I did not get to use a whole lot. Um, my Tsunami Shields, I've owned two of them. Um, they've probably seen somewhere, I'd say somewhere to 60 to 90 days on the water already at this point. One of them did fail me last year. Tsunami's warranty was excellent. I bought the reel online. I brought, I sent it into Tsunami. They replaced it, you know, at three months after ownership. And I absolutely beat the hell out of that reel between Big Tog, uh, striped bass fishing, blue fishing. I put it through the ringer for sure, and uh, false albacore fishing. I haven't hit issues with these reels. That, I mean, in general, in terms of them seizing up um, on a kayak, I'm low to the water. Spray always goes over the bow. Reels are constantly getting wet. Maybe not submerged, but they're taking on water from spray and chop. Uh, in terms of, of that, the durability of that, Tsunami Shield's absolutely a winner. Um, the line roller bearings on both the Shield and the Daiwa Fuego have not been seizing up on me. However, I feel like the Fuego does cast a little better. It's a little bit more finesse oriented. It's a little easier to turn the reel and to, you know, perform a little bit more light tackle functions. You know, it's a little easier to vertical jig, especially with lighter jigs. Um, but they're both winners to me. I do like the durability so far of in conditions of the shield versus the Fuego. But uh, in terms of I had to really present the bait perfectly, or work some jigs, you know, to their to, to their finest capacity. Uh, the Daiwa Fuego is the winner there, but at the same time, for a hundred dollar reels, these are both winners. Will continue to be seen in the, my videos going forward. Um, in terms of what I had to use, if I chose one to see the freshwater use, I'd be using Daiwa Fuegos also. I'll be using this for lake trout jigging, probably some salmon fishing stuff like that. It's a great reel. It's I, I really like it for for that type of fishing. All right, so th those reels are big winners. If you end up buying either one of them, people did ask me about them quite often. Um, you know, it goes a long way. Just go through those links in my description. Um, those are called affiliate links. Anytime you buy any fishing tackle through those links, it sends a few bucks my way. I mean, it makes a difference. All right, the next big winner, that's these DOA products in general. I've been really impressed with DOA jig heads. Um, they have a very good barb system to properly secure plastics. The hook size is perfect for a lot of three to four inch baits. Um, they make jig heads from about an eighth ounce 
to a half ounce. I mean, I really never had to fish such light jig heads for a lot of my inshore saltwater. There's their half ounce jig heads. This is what I use to land those schoolie sized tarpon. Um, a lot of your light tackle jigging, man, these jig heads were excellent. Their soft plastics were excellent. You know, I make soft plastics, but mine tend are a little large, you know, five inch plus baits in general. Uh, when I needed to fish three to four inch baits, man, these, I never really fished with a whole lot of DOA products. These worked really well. They did the job for what I needed um, for regular off the shelf product that you can just go into a Walmart that every tackle shop kind of down there more or less carried. These are excellent jig heads. Uh, a lot a lot of your light tackle needs and they make jig heads for up to a half ounce and uh, they're big winners man like you know I, this was totally taking me out of my comfort zone and uh, these products were excellent all right finally the reason i'm out here even um the big loser on my thule rack right that was held together by jb weld right now and i just kind of broke it apart these bolts corroded out so those bolts right there, they ended up corroding out on the road but with me. And um, my friend who has a track rack, also made by Thule, had the same problem happen. Um, so basically my horizontal bars um, are no longer secured because that bolt corroded out on me. Uh, this is a $700 rack. However, Thule did send me the replacement part. It's two years old. Um, this is my big failure on the road. It, it definitely had me sweating on the way to drive back down. Uh, if I hit the right pothole, I might have had a problem. You know, I did hold it back together with JB Weld, but, you know, I can't get these out on the road. There was nothing I could really do on the road. However, I got my, my replacement in the mail. Um, had me sweating, you know. It's a $700 rack. I mean, these holovators are two years old. They hold up really well. I have no complaints. Sorry, three-year-old holovators. Um, I have no complaints about these guys. But this rack did have me sweating on the drive back down. Um, I guess it's only relevant to the pickup truck holders. But I can't complain about Thule's customer service for taking care of me. I forgot one thing as I was assembling my rack. One more loser. The Lowrance Hook 4 failed me after one month of ownership. Uh, the battery voltage was no problem. The wiring was brand new. The unit was just corrupt. Um, it would power on for a minute, there's something wrong with the processor, and then it would turn off. Um, had to get another one at West Marine, and hopefully this one's going to get a warranty replacement. Um, I had those Lowrance Mark IV units for like five years before the power pin kind of snapped on me. I think that's all I got for you. Dude, there's a TV here? Welcome to Brooklyn, man. I don't know, how did I not see this? That's hilarious. Somebody dumped the TV right here. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, well, if you have any comments or questions, um, all sorts of characters, man. When I'm filming these segments, I got a street racing, drag race, and nosy people. But anyway, um, I guess it comes with the territory. And that's really it in terms of my experiences with Florida. No one around, they're pretty good on camera. But if I have a lot of people in the vicinity, I get like, you know, bottled up because everyone thinks I'm weird. It's true. You know, you, you find somebody filming out in a public area, it's weird. You know, I don't have the space to work in my truck bed at parking in the street in Brooklyn, so I got to come out to somewhere kind of public to, to replace stuff and, you know, work on my truck, etc. It is what it is. All right, that's it for me. I'll talk to you later.